Now this is a, an offshore type of jacket. It's got uh, a nice sort of buckle loop system here. On this one side is the actual canister. This is compressed uh, CO2. If I only pushed on this part, I can't open it. I have to squeeze this and that to open it. So one of the benefits of this is if you have to move around an object, you can leave one end on, connect the other, and then release the second so you're always clipped in. Hi, this is Tom from Life 4.0. If you are here, you undoubtedly like boating and being on the water. So do Karen and I. It's been a lifelong passion. But in order to make the passion last a lifetime, we take personal safety very seriously on board our boat, Sea Rose. Suffering from an avoidable injury or worse, hoping for rescue in a storm-tossed life raft is a quick way to lose that passion. In this second installment in our series on boating safety, we dive into the product side, where we will cover life jackets, as well as the tethers and jack lines you need to stay on board. So, let's get started. Okay, let's now talk about some products around safety. First one I want to cover are jack lines. So, jack lines are, um, this is one designed for these ribbon kind of um, fabric webbing that runs from the cockpit all the way up to the foredeck here and it is secured at this bow cleat. This jack line uh, is made by Wishard uh, and it's got a kind of a buckle here and then a cover over the buckle so you can set this for the right tension um, on the jack line. I keep mine a little bit loose. You don't want it too tight otherwise it's going to sort of could get jammed in some of that jib sheets and other objects up there. So also I like this one because it has a glow-in-the-dark little center thread there so it's easier to find at nighttime. You attach your tether from your life jacket to the jack line. I'll go through that in a second. But the jack line is another one of those products and features that is trying to help you from falling overboard. And you want it kind of low down on the deck here. Another possibility, if your boat can handle it, is a jack line kind of centered along the upper deck here where you clip in and if you fall, you're less likely to go over the lifelines. There is a risk with this side deck jack line that even though it's holding you from going all the way in the water, you're gonna be kind of dangling over the lifeline and need to be rescued or trying to pull yourself up over the lifelines. So if you can accommodate a jack line coming down through this area, um, that's great. We just have a lot of things that are in the way, so you'd end up having to unclip and reclip onto your jack line. So the most common arrangement is to see these jack lines running down the side deck. Now, you might be wondering if you can use a rope for a jack line. You could, uh, but the issue with that is when you're not clipped in or when you're just trying to move around on the deck, um, if you put your foot down on a rope, your foot could roll over the rope and the webbing is flat and is less likely to cause you to lose your footing. So you can kind of see that with these sheets, my foot can easily roll over those and the webbing. While I might slip over it, I'm gonna grab onto the um, non-skid on the deck itself, and it's just a little bit safer. Okay, so let's talk about life jackets and tethers. As I mentioned, um, for connecting to the jack line, you're gonna need a tether for that. Uh, but first off, let's go with life jackets. So um, we're using inflatable life jackets. I recommend you consider that a whole lot more comfortable than a, um, a non-inflatable life jacket. Um, now this is a, an offshore type of jacket. It's got uh, a nice sort of buckle loop system here for attaching the tether to it. Um, and also we have added um, what are called crotch straps. So these uh, it's an extra add-on you can buy separately. Um, it goes, attaches to the back of the life jacket and it's got two loops that go around and clip on to the front of the life jacket right there. So you've got two loops there that go around your legs and prevent the life jacket from floating over 
your head. If you were to raise your arms up, uh, theoretically, you could slip right out of, of a life jacket, um, even a, a nice big inflatable one like this. So these are made by Crusaver, a lot of different products out there, but we like this design. Um, so um, one thing we do when we have new people on board the boat is we make sure that um, they know obviously where the life jackets are um, and that they have a dedicated inflatable life jacket that they've already adjusted when they get on board so it's ready to go in an emergency. So I clip in here, again I've got these nice loops here, um, it's got all the standard things that uh, if it doesn't automatically inflate in the water uh, for whatever reason you can pull this uh, pull cord and that'll trigger the inflation tube to inflate the bladder and there's also um, an inflation tube for you to use if none of those other options work. Um, so for the crotch straps. I've got two here. Um, goes around underneath me there and clips back in. And the other side comes around and underneath and clips in there. Uh, granted, it's not terribly comfortable. Uh, you kind of get used to it. It's not, they're not really need to be really, really tight. Um, but it again, it's preventing the life jacket from lifting over your um, over your head and, and floating away. So there's a setup there uh, for the life jacket. Um, inside here is a bladder that will inflate with the uh, a cartridge, a um, compressed air cartridge, and a little tablet that disintegrates in the water and then triggers that inflation to occur. So when you fall in the water, these don't inflate instantly. It takes a little maybe. 10 or 15 seconds for that tablet to dissolve and then the life jacket will inflate. Okay, so let's dissect the life jacket itself. Um, it's a lot going on inside here. Uh, I'm going to open up for you downstairs so you can see what's kind of standard within the inflatable life jacket and what we've added on for additional accessories to make them even better. Okay, let's uh, take a little closer look at uh, our inflatable life jackets. I wanted to share with you um, what we've done with um, the standard setup for inflatable life jackets. Um, as I mentioned, this is a product from Crusaver. A lot of companies make these. Uh, we happen to like the fit of these very well. Um, here, these are a couple years old, so the, the plastic here that you're normally supposed to see inside up to the cartridge um, it's a little faded, but inside there you want you're looking for a little uh, green tab to be showing if it's a red tab It means it's uh, something's happened with the canister inside or the dissolvable tablet and you need to uh, Do servicing to it to rearm it. So that's what uh, this normally is for um, So I'm going to show you what we've added inside here uh, this is a there's a a zipper here that, that just sort of breaks open when the thing inflates um, and I'm just going to go ahead and open that up. And on this one side is the actual canister. This is compressed uh, CO2 and uh, the whole arming setup here. So you can see inside here you're looking for a little green uh, color there. And uh, so there is a, a rearm kit that you should have several of these with you. It's got a new canister, a new tablet, and a new little tab there um, to uh, hold it from accidentally being tripped open. But you want to check this on an annual basis and make sure it's okay. Now if I unzip this further, you're going to see there's a little light here. I don't know if you can see that very well. Uh, but this is, uh, this is, the light is actually made by Crusaver, but it doesn't come with this jacket. I had to buy it separately. Um, but it attaches, there's a little tab on the back there, and it attaches through a hole in this outside of this bladder, not, a, not the inside part that needs to inflate and keep air in it, but just sort of a little seam part of it. And um, that's there, and it's got a little sensor down here. So when this comes in contact with water, um, it the light will activate because of the things I've added in here this is a very tight fit on the other side if I open that up you can see uh, the AIS beacon uh, this is a very important item to have this is made by ACR it's called AIS link and um, it has uh, 
you'll need to read instructions closely on how to set this up. It has a little ribbon that goes through this bracket and basically when that ribbon gets stretched um, it breaks open this bracket and activates it, it uh, deploys a little antenna and then it turns the AIS beacon on. So with this you'll see the uh, an AIS uh, icon on your char plotter. There's also a whistle inside here as well. And then finally, you can see it there sort of is the inflation tube if for some reason the life jacket doesn't automatically inflate when you're in the water. I would highly recommend that you get some kind of AIS beacon for your life jacket. Uh, this is a relatively new development. They've had them around for a while. Um, there used to be these personal e -perbs which is helpful, um, but then, then you're relying upon another rescue service, an airplane, a Coast Guard, uh, monitoring EPIRB signals to pick it up. You're gonna lose valuable time with your person in the water and not knowing where they are um, and maybe even not know even that they went in the water. Um, and so you're kind of relying upon somebody else. I believe strongly that you have to try to do as much as you can yourself on board the boat with the crew you have. I think those are the best people to be able to rescue you in the short term. So have a look at those. Highly recommend that. Um, we're gonna, we have two of these on board. We're going to get two more so that we have four life jackets that are fully set up for offshore use. Okay, so that's the life jacket. Let's go into tethers. So the tether we like to use is a two-length tether. Um, it's got a short piece here and uh, like maybe a meter and a half length long piece. Um, this one, this brand, um, has nice stretchable ones so that it doesn't have a long piece dangling next to you while you're going up and down to the foredeck. Um, now this clip, this is the end that clips to you, to your life jacket. Um, so I would clip it around here like this and make sure it snaps in. It's got a pull strap there to release it from you. Um, so you connect to that. And then you choose one of these to connect to the jack line. And it can also, by the way, be any kind of object. It can be a lifeline, it could be a pad eye. You know, really the jack line is the one that you, you could probably use most of the time when you're going up onto the deck. Um, these are a two part uh, release clip. If I only pushed on this part, I can't open it. I have to squeeze this and that to open it. So it's two part and um, that's to prevent it from getting wedged into an area and having this part be pushed open accidentally and it releasing from whatever it's attached to. And it's a very quick operation. You kind of grab it with one hand and you're able to kind of do that in one motion and open it up. You have a choice obviously of short one and long one. Um, one thing that you do not want to do is take, for instance, if you're going to attach the long one to the jack line, you don't want to attach the short one to you. The reason for this is, if there's an issue when you go overboard, um, and you want, if you're being dragged in the water and having a hard time breathing, um, you want to release yourself from the tether. And you want to be able to find the strap and do one pull and let the tether leave you. If you happen to take the extra uh, second piece here and it's attached to you, you're still attached and you're trying to figure out how to get this off in the water um, under a lot of pressure. So um, that's why it's not good. I sometimes clip it to there like this so it can go up and down there um, while I'm using the long one. Um, or of course you can just let it dangle. Um, so that's how that works. Now this, like I said, you can clip into a jack line, you can clip into pad eyes, um, and uh, you've got all sorts of options for doing that. Now you may want be wondering why you'd want to have two lengths here. Um, one of the benefits of this is if you have to move around an object which will require you to disconnect your tether, you can leave one end on, connect the other, and then release the second. So you're always um, in, you're always clipped in. So you, you know, connect to the new object that you want to connect to, and then release the um, the old tether. Um, and it also allows you if you don't want to. Uh, have too much travel distance. You don't want to have a meter and a half of distance that you can fall. You can attach with a short one and be more in control. So that's about tethers. Okay, that wraps up this second video in our series on boating safety. As always, we hope you enjoyed it and we encourage you to like it so others can more easily find this kind of content. 
be sure to check out our playlist of other how-to videos on our Life 4.0 channel, as well as our many sailing adventure videos as we explore this amazing planet one anchorage at a time.